Hello, I'm Lucas, and I'm sitting on my floor, and this is Strike This on MD, and I was gone for a day due to anxiety over the coronavirus. Uh, it's not too bad in Shanghai, thankfully, but it's ever-present on my mind. Anyway, I also had nothing to talk about, but today I do, so we're going to review The Book of Swords, Part 1, edited by... Um, Gardner Dozois with short stories by K.G. Parker, Robin Hobb, Ken Liu, Matthew Hughes, Kate Elliott, Walter John Williams, Daniel Abraham, C.J. Uh, Cherry, uh, and Garth Nix. And the uh, prominent story is the one by Robin Hobb. As talked about on the back, and they mention it here, her name is all over the place, so she must be a big deal. Um, and the order of names here is the order that the short stories are in. And for the most part, all these stories are, are great. I cannot complain too much. Uh, I wrote little brief synopses for each one to give a brief idea. Uh, I see a lot of fantasy on Booktube. You, it seems to me that the there's been a shift from you know young adult to uh, sort of free for all, but mostly from young adult to fantasy or like young adult fantasy. But I never really see people talk about short stories in general, but especially uh, fantasy short stories. So uh, maybe I'm just not watching the right people, but. I'd like to go through each story briefly and talk about, I just dropped the book on the floor, I apologize, uh, talk about each one just a little bit, uh, starting with K.J. Parker's The Best Man Wins, which is told from the perspective of a, um, a blacksmith. He makes all kinds of things, and he used to be a, a warrior, I guess. You would call it, and uh, he encounters a young man who wants the best sword ever made and to be trained by the best swordsman ever. Uh, and the best, the blacksmith happens to be that man, at least in the eyes of this young boy. He is seeking revenge uh, on the man that killed his father. And uh, I, I really enjoy it. So, that's a win for me. <laughs> um, next would be Robin Hobbs' story, Her Father's Sword, which is set in the Farseer world, and there's a brief appearance by Fitz Chivalry Farseer. Um, I've not read these books, but in this instance, he's an envoy sent to Shrike with poisoned food, poisoned bread, to deal with these pillaging... Forged. Uh, he happens to stop in a town that's been attacked recently and some loved ones have gone missing into the sea. But he warns them, your loved ones will be back. But they won't be the same. And if they want something, they will take it. And it follows, uh, what is her name? Uh, it follows Taura? A young girl looking for her father. And I, I love it. If this is uh, indicative of Robin Hobb in general, in any of her writing, which I would hope it is. I mean, some people can be great short story writers and terrible novelists. Or just be lucky, I don't know. But uh, I've heard a lot about her, so I'm gonna... I think Robin Hobb is a woman. Anyway, I will be reading more of her, because this story is another win. And then there is The Hidden Girl by Ken Liu, which is set in Tang Dynasty, China. And this is young girl who's been taken uh, and trains for six years to be an assassin to take out the local Jie Du Shi, which is a military governor. Yes, Jie Du Shi. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, Jie Du Shi. Okay. 
my Chinese girlfriend is telling me how to pronounce it correctly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyway, she is set out to attack that guy and kill him. But she learns of the consequences of her actions if she succeeds. Um, and again, another win. I was like, man, I should read fantasy more often. More fantasy short stories. These are killer. They're amazing ideas. And they're going all over the place. Probably the weakest one was K.J. Parker's, but it was still very strong. Anyway, I've got six more to go, so... Uh, the Sword of Destiny by Matthew Hughes, which is like this henchman. I didn't like this story very much, but this henchman was meant to get the Sword of Destiny and these other pieces of armor and equipment. But it has a mind of its own, and um, it doesn't necessarily want uh, what this henchman master has in store for it and it has this sort of moment that's pretty much ripped out of the hobbit the riddles and the dark thing and some of the ways that uh, matthew hughes describes things are just i was not a fan uh but maybe you would be it's not it's not terrible it's just not very interesting to me and then there is Kate Elliott's I Am a Handsome Man, said Apollo Crow, where the Emperor of Rome seeks out uh, Apollo Crow to steal a notebook or art sketchbook, art book, from a woman at the head of a revolutionary movement. And uh, again, it was not exactly great, but it was it was a big step up. It was really interesting. There's a lot of Fun ideas at play in that one. Uh, and then there is Walter John Williams' uh, The Triumph of Virtue, where Goodman Quillifer helps the queen by searching uh, for the one who took, uh, tried to take her life, uh, and uncovers her uh, a conspiratorial court. Uh, it was okay. Uh, much better than the Sword of Destiny for me, but it's okay. Uh, it was still fun, I would say. Uh, then The Mocking Tower by Daniel Abraham, right back where we started with uh, fantastic stories. Uh, you know, the first three nailed it, the middle three, meh. And then uh, The Mocking Tower, where the prince seeks a sword that he believes holds the soul of his father who was king for 60 years and upon his death refused to die and put his soul in the sword so that he could continue to live and the prince believes that because of this uh because the king was not the kingdom was not allowed to succeed as it should uh it started the seven prince princes war so he seeks to destroy it, to end, break this cycle. Uh, fantastic story. I really, I love it. And I will look out for more Daniel Abraham, I think. Uh, and then there is C.J. Cherry's Fronting, Fronting, which uh, reimagines Beowulf in a way. It talks about Beowulf's, the world of Beowulf, uh, a generation after. And the, the grandson of Hrothgar, or Hrothgrar, uh, who gave away lots of gold and fronting a sword that can never fail a warrior, to Beowulf, uh, which it did fail Beowulf when he fought with uh, Grendel, or is it Grendel's mother? I'm forgetting now. <laughs> I apologize. It does say it in the story. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, well, um, when he's at the... I think it was Grendel's mother. And, uh... It, it, the grandson and his father... Uh, his, it, 
Hrothgrauer has finally died, and for the kingdom to, like, succeed, they have to hold this feast and thing, but they have no money, they have no gold, uh, because he gave it all to Beowulf, and he thought that, oh, I can pay them, and they'll bring back more gold, and things will work out, uh, and yeah, he goes searching, uh, his father goes searching for food or for anything so they can have this feast so that everyone in the, in the neighborhood will accept the succession and not be angry. But they only have so many pigs, and if they use all the pigs, then they really have nothing. So he goes looking for the sword. Uh, and then it, it, was, it was fantastic. And then there's Garth Nix. Uh, and, uh, and I, uh, a cold trail, what is this called? A long cold trail, my handwriting, it looks like icing, uh, where Mr. Fitz and Phil Tack search for a godlet in a blizzard, which is caused by the godlet, and of course there's danger afoot, uh, and I didn't really like this one, I thought... The way they talk is silly, but I guess it's fantasy, so uh, it was not bad. It was, it was good otherwise. Uh, anyway, it was really interesting to see uh, because this short story, short story collection is meant to uh, be sort of an homage to Gardner Duzois' love and first introduction to fantasy uh, with sword and sorcery stories. And uh, it's amazing to see how many different ways swords can be used in a story, the, the symbolism of it. Um, you know, whether it's a weapon to get revenge or uh, an honorable family uh, heirloom or uh, something that is tearing the kingdom apart in your mind uh, or you know just so many different ways to uh, explore humanity with the symbol of the sword and uh, I'm looking forward to the second part uh, part two which has uh, a bunch of short stories namely uh, one by George R. R. Martin so look forward to that soon I will I would love to hear what you have to say about any of these authors or any of these short stories. Please let me know. Uh, or what you think I could read next, or what I should read next, or what you think of Gardner Dussois, or anything like that. Okay? Thank you. Bye.